goodness knows what day it is, but welcome to the Tea and Trails podcast. Thanks so much for joining us and thanks to all our partners and Patreons too. We have got Mountain View, Outdoor Active, Bella Forte, Silver Active, Root, the Said Jury, Running Store, Protein Level, SportCheese.com, Big Bobble Hats, X Miles, Om, and Hornside Farm Cottages too. Pop over to Patreon and check them out also. Pop over to Summer Crazy if you would like some awesome Tea and Trails merch. There was a lot of Tea and Trails merch in Coniston this weekend my goodness Eddie it was such a wonderful I start crying already <laughs> no good stuff pull yourself together man I told you you cry 15 minutes in <laughs> you're just looking in the mirror look at all that t- big... merch <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was wild honestly it was wonderful it was brilliant just to see uh, so many people supporting the podcast and rocking the yeah definitely the uh, pumpkin is the most popular colour out there Pumpkin Hooded, episode 33. This week, we chat with the guy who stole all our hearts jogging around the Lake District in his little red shorts, bucket hat, and bottles full of active root. There is nothing more satisfying than seeing through a plan, slogging your guts out, and it all coming to reality. And I think that's what happens, is the best thing that happens when one of your bestest mates, nicest guy, someone who would always step aside for you on the trail, hold the gate open, or share their snacks. I wasn't sure about that last one, but I'll put it in. I couldn't be happier or proud of you, buddy. I can't wait to hear all about it. So this episode is in your honour. And also, I think, to all those who need to believe, who need to believe they can still get better as the old age knocks on the door, who think that they don't have time, they don't have enough talent, they can't climb that mountain, they can't run that trail. You've shown us, and I think if people want to go back in the back catalogue, because really this journey started when the podcast started. You've shown us that hard work, diligence, you never, ever gave up. Every week you were looking for those marginal gains. You were ticking off the training. You're ticking off the gym sessions. You've done everything that hard work pays it back. So welcome to the show, V50 Champ, Lakeland 100, extraordinaire finisher, the one and only. (laughs) It's Gary from the podcast! (laughs) Thanks, Eddie. Well, I need need to up my game next time you do a race. That was (laughs) what an intro i don't normally give our guests any sort of introduction because i allow them to do that themselves but i felt you needed a uh a proper salute you put me up that's brilliant salute for this podcast and uh yeah we can't wait to hear all about it and uh share oh gosh the tears 2017 first time i told the line and it ruined me. Lots of questions asking about how you've done it and how you've turned that around and that sort of performance. And I think we we know the answer to all of that. And it's basically me, that my guidance, my help, my support. Yeah, the past 24 months. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Joking aside, though, I called on lots of little moments throughout the years on the podcast that guests have said, uh, the coaches have said, and yourself, that played its part at moments during that race. When to push, a moment in particular wasn't going to define my race in a negative way. Um, yeah, and use lots of uh, moments from the podcast. It's amazing, Eddie, what we do. It's a real good resource. <laughs> Gosh, stay tuned, guys. Can't wait to hear all about it. Yeah, before we get to all of the nitty gritty. All about you. <laughs> I do feel a bit uncomfortable when the, the spotlight's on me so much, but yeah, we'll go with it. I've actually already week. said to Gary, you know, Eddie's race reports are legendary. <laughs> They're still getting viral hits. Well, yeah, come on then. What have you been up to? Oh, this week? Nothing. There's really nothing exciting. I'm really struggling this summer holidays to find any sort of balance in any area of my life. My hand is dipping too often in the evening into that Doritos packet. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my um I've lost my I think it's just so hard. These summer holidays seem so long. Out of routine. We're having to do quite a bit of traveling, seeing family and stuff. And I just have found that really hard and really tiring. Actually, after the double header last weekend, seems um age away, I was gonna give myself like a couple of days recovery get back on it and then we were traveling again and oh my gosh I felt weary I didn't sleep very well on the Friday night the Saturday night the Sunday night like me not sleeping very well is like three hours of sleep it was really really bad I get into this bit of insomniac cycle where I'll fall asleep really deeply when I go to bed because I'm so tired and then I'll wake up at about one o'clock and I can't get back to sleep again and it is awful and I get into it about every six weeks and two or three really bad nights and they happen to fall over that weekend (gasps) 
I was wiped out. I just struggled to maintain breathing for a couple of days. <laughs> um, and I was so parent. It was really hard last week. I just, oh, the rust just fell by the wayside a bit. It ate me up a little bit, Gary. I won't lie because I'm not, I, I need running in my life. It doesn't bother me if I don't get my training sessions done, but if I don't get out and breathe some air and a yeah, little bit away from mummy, 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 why is it? Why is a whale make that noise? Why is it black? Why is the waves coming? Did the star come from there? What are we doing today? What are we doing now? With a kid, you get the kid home with the kids. We've done something, swimming or something. I walk in through the door, the kettle goes on, and they go, What are we doing now? And I'm like, yeah. just a minute of Don't stop Eddie. I just... warn you. <laughs> my 15 year old boy still is here. <laughs> What are we doing now? Can we all just moment? What are we, what are we, what's for tea? Thinking of menus, thinking of me. Oh my God. Anyway, it's all yeah. a bit too much. Bryn and I both had a hard reset. I've let the strength work go. I never let my strength work go. The last week I let my strength work go. Back on the strength work, back training. Did my first session yesterday in about three weeks, five minutes uphill, six by five minutes uphill. Oh, I love it. It wasn't good, Gary. <laughs> but I cut myself grace. I was like, this is all you gotta do is do the session. Just get back into doing sessions. First one's not gonna be good. Let's face it, it's not gonna be good. You're not gonna go, oh my god, look, I look like John Album going up. It there. takes a few weeks, doesn't it? <laughs> so let's just get back into it and let's just see what it goes. So we're fine. The week has started, we're good, we're going well so far, feeling much better. I've had some exciting kit drop from Centurion ready for Totret. So that's much more interesting. This yeah. is exciting. A new pair of not sponsored. Uh, Catula micros. I know what they are. I bought some of those when I helped on Sarah Perry's Bob Graham round and they're still, they're still in the packet. <laughs> Pass them on. I, I had know. these for the spine, maybe not quite like these. They weren't Catula actually, and I broke them. They're part of the mandatory kit for Top Rep. And so I bought the bigger ones, big spikes, because I said to Bryn, if we have to put spikes on in a high mountain pass, it's not like the spine. It's not the Pennine Way. I yeah. just bought, I just wore little um, tiny things. What were they? Na- yak, yak tracks for the Pennine Way. Okay. Yeah. They didn't last very long. Um, so I was like, if we're putting, we're very high and we're going across something that's potentially quite dangerous. So I want to, I've got three kids at home. I'm going for a decent spike. No messing about. No messing about with us, Gary. So that's much more exciting. Planning logistics. And I've got some exciting things once we get back to France next week. I've got a couple of exciting adventure things planned with mates. Um, So a couple of big days out. Be great. You did that last year, didn't you? You had a big adventure with your mates. I love big adventures. So I've got two planned, uh, all situated around. The kids are in camps for one week only on the summer holiday. So that week is going to be dirty, Gary. Uh, So many different WhatsApp groups of different friends that I'm like, you do So things have turned around, got to turn things around, but to kudos to all the parents out there trying to juggle work, kids, endless summer holidays, holidays, which aren't holidays, are they? Oh my God. Not when you're a parent, no. Trying to dry laundry and saying, just put your shoes on when you go outside. I can't dry anything. I've got nowhere to, oh my God, I need to hear myself and I'm so boring. You want to do what I do? I've literally, I've only just took my Lake and 100 t-shirt off and it was now Thursday, Wednesday, oh, sorry. So. you would fit in well in the Sutton household because I'm like, you've only got one t-shirt, keep wearing wearing it, yeah. just it every night. <laughs> well, luckily my holidays are in the lake, so you know anything goes in the lakes. But I wouldn't be so. You, you, I think you're probably hypersensitive because you had a holiday, then a week uh, back home, and then another holidays, and it's just three weeks of disruption. I think um, it's probably amplifying how you, how you feel. Uh, yes, but I haven't helped myself either because I've had a, quite a few evening trips to co-op and. <laughs> Slipped down that left-hand aisle where there's all the purple wrappers and stuff. And it's so like I was talking to somebody and they're like, oh, you're so lucky to live in France with all that fresh produce and all that good food. And I'm like, you're so lucky to live near a Tesco's and a co-op with all those dirty snacks. <laughs> Couldn't do it though, Gary. I'd be, uh, I'd have to, I'd have to, I'd have to, uh, Bryn would have to check my shopping bags. Anyway, let's talk about you. How was your week leading into Lakeland, uh, Tell us, how was that journey, champ, into the biggest life-changing uh, performance? Like career-defining moment. <laughs> career-defining moment. How, that's what they do. Is that what podcast is where she's really, really American? It's the... Um, oh, oh, Yellow Runner. You know, the free trail one. Um, what's his name? Is it Dylan it, Bowen? Is it Dylan, Dylan Bowen? Bowen, yeah. It's like, so how was that? That that UTM beat, like life-changing moment. And then he seems to find people that are really good and just like talk. So Gaza. <laughs> They're Americans. Americans talk really well. <laughs> but the week itself, I did some easy running. I did my two mile at marathon effort on the trails. You know, it didn't really play out that way in the race itself. We talk about, but my heart rate variability 
recipe was was dipping really out of all the metrics that you get back from your watch that is one i really trust so i was yeah, pretty anxious the only metric. people that look at your garments and send me messages saying garmin says i'm garmin if i just do if i do a 20 mile run and then i sit down and work for the rest of the day it says oh well done nice restful day yeah oh goodness me yeah it's wild yeah. hrv was dropping and it went to unbalanced on race day which i think that probably put some layers on my anxiety yeah do you think it was your anxiety like fitful sleep like waking up and well i was googling yeah I put, sleep was poor you know my wife works shift so i was getting up at like four in the morning and take because esme had work experience so i had to get up to take lisa to work to come back to take esme to work and not a great prep week. So yeah, I was exhausted. Um, stress and anxiety can affect your heart rate variability too. Hopefully it was just that and not some um, illness that was about to happen. Uh, and yeah, in a nutshell, I kind of basically worked myself into a frenzy. But when I got to Coniston, um, it was a nice welcome distraction. Again, I was hoping that uh, the other residents in my shared dorm, so that was quite random, like who was going to be in there. But I think all bar two were Lakeland 50 and 100 runners. So that was pretty good. Everybody was just on the kind of keeping it low. Huge snorers in the dorm. But that was it. Yeah, pretty easy week. Not much running. Yeah, there was some other outside influences, which I'm quite an anxious person in situations, but this was this was another, another level. I, I suppose, yeah, we better end it there because we'll talk about the race itself later on in the podcast. Really, Dylan, I just relaxed. I just did me for the race week. I didn't get involved in media and uh, all the things I could pick. And I just sat back at the sponsor's house and enjoyed cups of tea. <laughs> well, you can't do any good, can you? That's, you know, that week, there's no point in me going out and just trying to cram in some last minute training. The whole packing, anybody who's done this, so I had to pack because I was going to camp too. I camped on that day just to get out of the sun and have somewhere to lie down. So I had to pack to camp and then pack, pack to race. So I was really stressed out because normally i'll go at lisa can you just check so invite you gary to get stressed out about things as well (laughs) but the only everything was fine to be honest with all that side of things was fine apart from i didn't have a to-do list i wish i'd done just a little tick box all these things i need to do at this moment in time because that would have just stopped me from being me and faffing i would have just methodically ticked them off that's the only thing i did wrong luckily your crew and going right let's sort this out now once and for all get it done put your feet up it's nice to have sometimes a bit of crew around, but then when you're really anxious as well, sometimes they can do your head in. Well, Aaron was good. Aaron was a good traveling companion. So Aaron picked me up from Coniston Youth Hostel and took me to, I was like VIP'd to like the quarter of a mile trip down the road. Um, <laughs> Aaron's, he's such a calm guy, Aaron, honestly. If you just need a nice little calm yeah. influence around you. Yeah. I remember at the start of the spine and I just was actually going to eat my insides because I was so terrified. But I just sat with Marco and Debs in their car yeah. and thought, calm, don't, calm people is what you need to surround yourself with in moments like that. Not somebody weeping, crying, panicking. <laughs> <laughs> you and I together not be the great <laughs> combination yeah. at the start of a race. <laughs> Give ourselves warm up into it and then we'll meet on the trails. This week, we welcome our guest, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy we all know and love as Gary from the podcast. Did you set out this time last year? Was it Lakeland 100 was like our chat? This is what I want to do. You set out with a purpose to do a PB on that Lakeland. Yes. And you said, (laughs) right (laughs) off, one girl, I want to win that V50 age group and that slowly became more and more the goal as you kind of went through the training races up into the Lakeland cycle and you saw I think I think you sent me a whatsapp to be like I feel pretty rubbish in training but I felt great in every race that I've done this year Eddie and I thought of that when you towed that Lakeland 100 line that all the races you've done you felt really strong they've gone really well and you were sort of slowly dialing down into that Lakeland 100 performance which was i mean i've only known you for a couple of years but i probably would say that was the performance of your life would you say gary Thwaites? i would yeah over that distance 100 you know the first time i cracked three hours because as a runner 
I started running road marathons and it was a long, long, it took me a long time to get sub three. <laughs> so that when you execute, you know, a perfect split road marathon, that's, that's a pretty special feeling. But yeah, definitely going long. I've never executed a, a, a long distance, a hundred miler like this. And a, and a training plan. Like, have you ever stuck to the training plan like you did for this, like the diligence that you did stick to this one? Yeah, I'm pretty good, actually. But it's funny again, well, because on the, yeah. on the roads, on the roads it's very pace oriented and you're not chasing hills if i had to reflect on something maybe it's a negative maybe some of the trail runs that i've done weren't specific enough for the lake 100 but yeah there's, there's no lack of motivation and getting out of the door just talk us through if listeners don't know if they haven't extensively googled you which i know is the hot talk us through your lakeland 100 history your splits your your race performances up to this one because this was your fourth third third sorry I thought I sounded really good at my reading. <laughs> yeah, let's cut that bit out. So this is your, I thought you. I thought we only had to sit through it one more time, and it's going to be too oh, long. Goodness me. Going to be got, long. Got two years yeah. of this. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is your third. Yeah. Like, Talk me through the other. Well, your journey does start the year before because it's super hard to get in. So I was checkpoint crew with the Chi Charge team at Howtown when they managed that the checkpoint in Howtown. And you know, also that your journey of wanting to do it starts before then. And like loads of our listeners, they you know, they they start on the road, they do this race, they do that race, and it's like, oh, what's this Lakeland 50? What's this Lakeland 100? And um, yeah, but doing the hardmost 110, um, that really opened my eyes to going long. So yeah, I toured the line in 2017 i was in pretty good shape then and capitulated after my memory is everything after mardale was pretty horrendous uh beaten up big time so much to the point that i didn't even think about the late 100 until 2021 what was your and time in the first event and your 25 work? hours to just over 25 25 hours so pretty good you know yeah. I, you know i don't want to say it isn't anything than what it is 25 hours there's so many people that would qu- gladly swap but you know when you're i was aiming for sub 24 again you know i plucked that number up the sky because it sounded good (laughs) i didn't know if i could do it but when you're 25 hours you spend a lot of time realizing that you're not going to get um what you'd hoped was going to be the outcome for the day and yeah it was a just a big suffer fest the last um that was it must have been the last 30 miles and then yeah i put it put it to bed it really really wounded me as a, as a runner i didn't <laughs> yeah it just took it took a bit too much out of me i think that was and i didn't expect that i'd never i'd never gone that deep in in into the pain cave but i think it's important because lots of people will be coming out of that 150 going never again that was horrendous that took me so much longer but allow that to filter in knowing that and but also come back and try again because yeah. make better memories on that course like the South Downs Way 100. I fake <laughs> twice, <laughs> twice. I gotta go, but I can't die without having finished that goddamn race. Even though I don't want to. But yeah, like you had some, you went to some dark times. You came back again. What year did you come back for the second time? No, last year. Yeah. And again, I, I had no interest in that race at all. And just with my social group, they were doing it, the 50, I think some were doing the 102. And I went along to spectate and that was a fatal mistake because you get seduced pretty quick. So I took my name in the hat for 2022. Yeah. 2022. And, um, training went well. I've said to you, I I don't think I'm any fitter than last year. I don't think that is the case. Although, yes, I've raced better. All coming tops was slower, but placed a lot better. So in the scheme of how we managed, we managed that day, me and Neil, much better performance in previous years. And yeah, 2022 didn't go to plan. I don't think fitness was an issue then. I just think my body broke down. My groin <laughs> my groin, the, i think damien hoyle he's called a groin knack quite a few times i had i had groin knack and i just remember just being so frustrated again every everything after how town or mardale was pretty painful and i just couldn't move i could see my splits and i was i was a man running scared because while people who managed their race better were moving well i was like hemorrhaging time and um yeah the 50 runners a lot of 50 runners came past me um i'm not too sure if any other hundred runners came past me but again my memory of that race was was not good i was i was in a pretty i was pretty beat up but not 
like I was in 2017, where, like I said, it, it absolutely ruined me. I, I didn't want to do it. You were running again. above a paycheck in 2017. You didn't have maybe the experience you've got now. Yeah, you didn't yeah. have the strength and you had the fitness to get you that 25 hours and the like yeah. mental fortitude, but you weren't quite there. So you you were able to dig deep. The, the ingredients were all there. You haven't quite mixed it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I was a super fit in 20, um, 2017. And yeah, just I do remember my quads, my quads at Ambleside. The actual running flat was was really relatively pleasant, but any kind of climb or descent was just excruciating pain. So yeah, we dusted ourselves down and uh, took, took the name in the hat for 2023. So we talked already about your, your really quiet lead up week to the race and then... Uh, tell us about your kit. Tell us about any last minute kit changes. I saw some red shorts. Where had they come from? I've never seen them before. <laughs> You've never talked to me about cycling shorts, tight lycra, inappropriate packages. I thought I owned that look, Eddie. <laughs> when I saw your comment, I thought it's not too bad. <laughs> I thought you looked great. I didn't say you didn't look great. I just said it was a bold, bold choice. But if anyone's going to get the pockets together. I think I wore them on my Bob Graham round. So they're not a new piece of kit. Um, I've had those compressed sport compression shorts for quite a while. And I just I just wanted that little bit of extra support on my quads. I didn't Did want my meat to veg too exposed. So I put the, <laughs> the, <laughs> put the shorts over the top of that. Um, uh, kit wise on my feet, there were the uh the Hawker Tecton. I two. did I zoomed in on those two as well. Super, super good shoe. And my race vest was the Innovate Pro. It's brand spanking new. I think it's an eight litre vest, and that was high risk because I'd never ever well, maybe Rex and I done a little dog jog with that vest. And everybody told me, don't wear, you know, Lisa was like, you're crazy. Don't, don't do it. So I put my Montane vest in the drop bag of Dillman just in case it all went wrong. Yeah. Cause if you're not doing a long run in a vest, places, bits can move that you don't yeah. realize or annoy you. That's probably the worst thing is it can annoy you. The pocket system or something. Yeah, no, it was fine. It was really, you know, I think a lot, I probably had a pretty small vest compared to most people. Yeah, got everything in. Um, No issues. Luckily, no issues whatsoever. Anything else kit-wise that's significant? Uh, head torch. I know we've been big fans of silver on the podcast, but I popped my silver one and my BioLite head torch on the scales and the BioLite was a little bit lighter. So that's what I ran with. The ampage was the same. So I knew the part was going to last the same amount of time. So that's what I did with that. A bit of admin, what I do. If people's listening, you you need a spare battery. So I had a little bindi instead of a spare battery in case your head torch fails completely. I had a spare head torch and then a power bank. It tail main just in case you want a second night and you needed to charge everything up again. All the other kits, there was nothing really significant there. Their waterproof jacket was a Berghaus jacket, super light. I've got much better jackets. I've got a lovely Innovate jacket and the Shake Dry jacket. But yeah, just lightness. That's all I was I was going for. Grams. I think I said I was chopping cables off things and stuff being bit of my Eagles, yeah. Kidneys, anything to lose a bit of weight. What about your watch? What did you have it set to? Uh, did it last? Oh. That's it did last the journey because last time it didn't. And I was like a massive idiot. I just left it on the map all the time. So it was constantly refreshing. Anybody, anyone who wants to let their watch uh, last longer. I set a data screen that was just my heart rate. So the physical screen wasn't doing much. And I finished with about probably about 40% battery life. I took the turn the steps off. I didn't know, need my to know what my steps were for the day. I was pretty happy many, with that. Many, many. <laughs> but yeah, I was, so I was followed, I followed, I didn't have the navigation on from the very beginning because I thought we knew the route, which actually we'll talk about that. I didn't quite know the route as well as I thought. <laughs> um, and I think I turned navigation on in Buttermere. So for pretty much... Can you do that while you're mid? Did you have to pause yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. No, you just keep, you just turn it on. You just go into the into Very the menu good. and you turn the... Yeah, you know, you do you, you do run the risk, I suppose, you've watched crashing. But uh, luckily, it didn't, it didn't happen. Yeah, but I've got the 6, the Phoenix 6 Pro Solar. So it's not the brand spanking new. Um, garments, but yeah, got me through there for 24 hours and uh, nine minutes. Let's go to the start. You've got heart rate on your start. It'd be interesting yeah. to see starting heart rate because it's quite an emotional start and constant, isn't it? How did you feel? What was your plan? Did you go to plan in that first 10 miles? It, it, it was a real tricky, tricky race. I was full of anxiety on the on the start line. So my heart, my rest and heart rate was just insane. About? Because you've invested so much in this and you need to come and tell me. Uh, you know, I'm not too sure. Um, you know, it's a quite unique situation we have here where we put ourselves out there. But but that wasn't, it wasn't, I was never thinking 
oh my goodness, the podcast. That never yeah. entered my no, head once. It's not like that, are we? The podcast is a beautiful supplement to our lives and we just get to bleh about, <laughs> you know, it's not something we use as a platform in some ways, is it? It's no. like a, we want to we want to share the the lows. It's what <laughs> And it's but I couldn't. You. It's just chatting to mates. It's not a. Uh... But I couldn't rest all day. I was. I remember just lying in my tent, and my I could feel my heart pounding in my chest. And why that level of anxiety? I don't know. I'm quite an anxious racer. As soon I hoped once the gun went, like we've said many a times. I think even Brew with the coaches, we, we brought this up. Once the gun goes, everything lifts, uh, and that's what I hoped for. But that year didn't quite play out that way. My heart rate, poor Neil, my goodness me, he was like Dr. Yeah, Phil. With Neil, you were with Neil, like, till I went to bed, really. You were still with Neil quite close. Yeah, we we split up um, on the descent to Braithwaite. He was... He was consciously saving his quads. He didn't want to go as fast down there. And it does get a bit slippery down the bottoms and it started to rain. So we did split up there. But as I left Braithwaite, he was coming into Braithwaite. So we weren't that far away from each other. But that is the last time I saw him until the next day. But yeah, my heart, honestly, Neil, he needs a medal because at the beginning of the race, I was that person you didn't want to be running with. I was very negative. I was projecting a lot of negative thoughts because my heart rate was so high and my effort felt high everything just i just felt out of balance horrible but i always like the first 10 miles of a race uh, so i would never race to a heart rate because my heart rate would be like through the roof (laughs) i can't breathe i'm like i'm like (laughs) it's just and it's all anxiety and it's like it needs to come out of your pores and then it it slowly the body it's like an almost reset and the body goes hang on a second but it's just, and I think it's quite good for people to know that's totally normal. Like you can feel like a, such a high level of anxiety at the start. And then the first like 3K, 5K, five miles can feel like, oh, but believe that it will it will relax. The race will relax and you will relax and trust that that will happen, which presumably it did to you. It did fade. I think it's probably maybe about t- uh, when I had a conscious thought coming into Wasdale that, yeah, I think I'm feeling okay now. Wasdale, it's quite a way in. So let's see, I think, oh, couldn't speak. It must be the second. Is what, so you got boot, you got a uh, seat weight, boot, and then Wasdale. So you could be 20 odd miles into this race. So I had a long time of uh, pretty stress. I even convinced myself, I thought, God, I've got a virus. I've got COVID. What? the hell is going on with me and ultimately i decided that uh the date was incorrect for some reason it just the heart rate was just not having a good day because it didn't all through the race it would say i was um in warm-up in the warm-up zone or whatever it is but i was like huffing and puffing going up saying my deal i was like in my head push 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 and my heart rate was like I don't know, 110 beats i'm like this is just it's it's useless just do that <laughs> i wish i wish um so yeah i just can't with that but it, yeah I, like i said i think I, I was not a good person to be around look luckily uh, unlucky for neil i'm so comfortable with neil that I can just be a grumpy shit. Um, it's like your partner, you know, sometimes you save all your best behavior for a complete stranger um, and you're real horrible to the most dearest people in your life. And uh, Neil was sweet. You know, he said, look, Gary, you know, we've done this so many times and it's normally the other way around. <laughs> um, so, you know, you're, 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 you're old one. And I think sometimes we, we bumped into other runners along the way and that was a nice distraction because I thought, well, I can't be that miserable shit with these people i've got to be a bit more upbeat and then before i know it, yeah in wasdale it was like yeah actually yeah I'd, I'd i'd stop kind of focusing on that heart rate that negative and yeah i didn't feel ill i didn't think i'd covered anymore everything was okay <laughs> i didn't have a tumor of the brain anymore yeah. <laughs> it looks like it was really busy at the start like i was having to go through a lot of dots to find exactly where you were on the trail was it super busy did yeah. you run with anybody of notable um Fame. No, those those guys were super fast. Well, we did bump into um so Zoe Murphy. Um I've seen quite a few Dragons Back race videos with uh Trish and Robin, Shelly Gordon. We shared some miles together going up uh towards Seathway, Elaine Bisson too. She was there. She saved about bacon. We talked about so busy, we just followed a bunch of runners um straight out of the seatway checkpoint followed some runners and i even saw the gate and i remember saying neil i'm sure we go down there we went down there last year and you're like, oh yeah we did but we just followed these guys down, <laughs> down a path and olympus and called us back and that i think all together our accumulation of nav errors probably was about four five minutes tops um and i was 
you know, it's no, I'm um, not spoil, no spoiler alert. It was, I was 24 hours and nine minutes. So I was so pleased that it wasn't 24 hours and three minutes because I would have been absolutely destroyed with, 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 the, with those numbers. But yeah, yeah, it was super busy. And I, early, early days, I just thought it was awesome. It was a real good way of just reining my effort in. Some of the trails, you weren't really passable. Um, so you just got in this conga line of people. It was a lot busier than what I experienced in the past. And I just thought, yeah, you know, we wa- we're all walking, get my heart rate down, calm down, reset, just go with the floor. And then when the trails open up, we can move again. Yeah, I, that that wasn't an issue. I knew my splits were slower than previous years. I never thought about that. I never knew any, I never knew if anyone was a V50. I never knew if I was first V50, second V50, 10th V50. I didn't have a clue. Just going with the floor and just trying to manage myself as best as possible, really. When did you turn your head torch on? Because that's always a real magical point of 100. Yeah, that was... Um, so our eyes adjusted really. So we didn't turn them on into Wasdale, although people around us did. I, I turned them on that. as we Play the game. Last one. Last one. <laughs> we, but then we headed off up to Wasdale, put their torches on. And that, you know, anybody who does that race or even a recce at night on that course, you've got to turn around and look back because um just that view is sensational. All the people coming down into Wasdale and you climbing up Black Seals Pass. It, it always gives me a slight fear when you see all the head torches because it's like there are so many people. One, there's so many people that can overtake me when I slow down. <laughs> so many people. The feeling on the course, definitely for the first, uh, all the way to Braithwaite, felt busier than what I ever remember. It does really thin out after that. And the head torch for any geeks out there, the three amp battery, the BioLite one, it lasted until sun came up and it started to flash. As you know, a... give, give it, yeah, yeah. So it, it lasted the night. How did the night go? How did like, what was the weather like? What was nutrition like? How did you keep moving? Because that's often like a really tricky point. Well, I love the night. That's not an issue. You, 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 I do slow down because you don't want to, you know, the trail, if the trails are semi-technical, you don't want to go flying and the head torch doesn't quite light up the trails as the sun does. But that's probably where I think my nutrition issues started. Um okay. No, we can't. it was always going so. Positive. I was like, "This is so positive." How oh yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't plain sailing. Come on. <laughs> so Braithwaite again. I had the the, the cheesy flapjack yeah, last year, um, but this year no. I stayed. <laughs> I stayed safe. I went uh, corned beef slice and a vegetarian oh. quiche. <laughs> a corned beef slice and a vegetarian quiche. Would you ever go into a restaurant and go, mm, I'll have the, I'm gonna have a corned beef slice and a vegetarian quiche, please. Thanks. Is it 2 a.m.? Yes, that's yeah. <laughs> well. I just wanted something to cut through all of that um sweet. Well, I can think of much nicer things anyway. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we've got we got the corned beef slice. Neil came into that checkpoint as I was leaving, and it was it must have been a listener because I, I ate this corned beef slice and a listener, I just said, Oh. I feel, a bit, I feel a bit queasy now and didn't think nothing of it. And he, he I can't remember his exact words, but I was like, oh, it'd be proud, puke and rally. Um, and then as soon as he said that, I just projectile vomited everywhere. Yeah, it was, a, it was quite spectacular. Point. Just outside, I was walking out of Braithwaite, just walking with my food and um, completely emptied the tank. It was just like, well, it was quite... you know what? As I say to the kids, you've only got yourself to blame. <laughs> Well, I mentioned this at the end to um, one of the angels who was like looking after me at the finish. And she just, yeah, don't eat like pastry, don't eat pastry. Immediately, I was like, she knew that would trigger me. But at that moment in time, I just wanted it this. It seems, so. yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Because you're like, I want something in my stomach. And then, okay, right, puke. So, so, so I've been the. Did you do that? Or were you like, oh, it's okay, I can deal with this? Well, yeah, look, luckily. The Vela 4A was going down the protein rebel gels. I had a big, oh my God, I had a lot of protein rebel gels. <laughs> I squeezed, I had about, what's the about six hours of gels squeezed into one soft flask. Yeah, I see everything. I just a little <laughs> syrup. The active route was staying down. And sometimes, you know, that was wonderful because I was, with the drinks, I was relying on that to make up the calories because after I'd puke up another time later on down the trail um the cal yeah i needed the, just, the, just the liquid calories but yeah it, and it you know you do get this massive food fatigue so even though they're all going down they weren't tasting great the mint cake i think i need to step back from the mint cake because that seems to be that raw sugar i don't know what it is but that really really triggers me so yeah i was lucky i was eating i was fine i was did you try nutrition- the peanut m&ms 
No, I didn't. No, this this was a mistake, really. I had those in my drop bag at um, Dale Main, and I should have. I, I, I've never puked on a race, so I just never thought. Oh, but would... I've done enough for you. could have. <laughs> I didn't have any salt tablets to replace electrolytes. Um, yeah, yeah, I was a massive idiot. But no dramas. Luckily, you know, because I could eat. It wasn't like I got to a point where I couldn't eat. I was not. There was no point. I puked again at uh, Doc Ray. So there was no point after that. I enjoyed eating. And in actual fact, my little watch beeped every 25 minutes. You tell it where to go. Oh, goodness me. It was horrible. And I remember just like, just peeling, scraping a little bit of Villa Forte. You just the... take the sugar bit oh. off the outside and yeah, go. It's just, everything was too much. But it was staying down. Luckily, that was staying down. But the run in the night, maybe I could have gone a bit faster because that is quite a runnable section. You do all around the Blancathra Centre. I had a heavy flex going up Latrig. I ran up. Literally, I say run. It's not a, you, you're, you're tapping it out, aren't you? You're not really running up there. But we caught, just kept seeing head torches. I thought, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna catch these guys up. So I was always working, although I had no metric. When did you start? Like because you were quite, you were in the sort of middle of the field. I would say in the first third okay. of the race. Yeah. Yeah. When would you? When did you start? Like overtaking people. When did you start thinking? Yeah, I'm starting to move a little bit faster. Than this I mean, than the- heading in a Braithwaite. That's when I noticed. Um, Where is I don't that think- people that don't know on the. Um- oh, it's quite well. Braithwaite must be. Ooh, it's a boot to marathon. Um, so Braithwaite's going to be thirty odd miles, maybe thirty five miles into okay, the race. It was quite early on. It wasn't yeah. like. Yeah, you started. It goes to show as well, like the speed people went out. And that first, because it was a big dropout. There was a big dropout early on of a yeah, lot. Yeah. Well, I saw the video, the footage of everybody racing off. And we, yeah, you're right. We were probably about halfway um, in the field as we headed out of Coniston. And we didn't, I didn't really go past many people climbing up Coniston. We did go past quite a few people, say, to Seathwaite. But then we we lost all those because we did another <laughs> run down the road. But yeah, definitely after our Braithwaite, I just kept seeing head torches and go for them, basically. That was did it. And that a hard? Were you working a little harder than you should have been perhaps in some of those? Well, I don't think so because it didn't fall to pieces. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure as I passed those people going up the trig, and I was doing that. Like, you know, you're kind of quick tapping out, jogging, and they were all walking. They were probably thinking, "We'll see this idiot. <laughs> we'll see this guy." <laughs> we'll see. But I was so lucky, you know. I was. I think I had a bit of an unfair advantage on course because somebody had seen the team trails. I was representing. I had my team trails T-shirt on, or I'd be talking to somebody, and we'd get constantly recognised all the way around. And you just get these little boosts, you know. Nobody it was never negative, and um, always a lovely distraction. All those ones away. I was like, <laughs> you can throw. Them, you know, but it was just a dist- It was just a lovely distraction all of the way, you know. To constantly, I just. I don't think many people would have had that. Ex- same, well, Nobody would have probably had that experience that I had. Um, constantly, oh, you're the guy who does the podcast. Some guy was like, oh, you're that, you're that fellow who does that tea thing. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, started moving up the night. I I think I've said it quite a few times. I love the night. I just love running through the night. It's not something that we do very often. It's a treat. My, I think that did start raining then. And it's really funny, Andy Burry said this. Um, oh, sorry, I don't know if I've got this wrong, but memories of weather are different for every runner. Of course, because you're on a different stage of the course as well, aren't you? Yeah. So rain up high is going to feel a lot more traumatic than if you're down low and you're coming through the Connors uh, after Ambleside. It's, and, and also as well, how you're feeling. Like, yeah. it's a completely different experience. I only put my jacket on once. That the weather was bad? Yeah, but for some people, it's it's been... T- Torrential, and I would have I would have been still running while they were running, but obviously the, the lake's got many little microclimates. But every time it rained, I loved it. It just cooled me down. I'd be running like Jesus, just trying to <laughs> God, cool, cool myself down. I had my silly little bargain cap on, protecting myself. Um, Red shorts, yeah. letting that rain wash over those glorious quadriceps. <laughs> but the rain and the weather, it did. It was windy. I remember coming out of Mardale, and yeah, definitely it was windy. There. Yeah, but That's so much better than like scorching hot and being fried to a crisp. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go low high points. So far, we've had a puke and a rally, but uh, let's start with those. Uh, what was your lowest point of the race? The food. There was no physical low point. Um... There wasn't. Was there a moment when you thought, 
Because I often about 15 miles in go. Well, the first, probably the first 15 miles, actually. Yeah, as physically running the first 15 miles, I literally, I was making deals in my head with like, going to do this, going to do that. It was, I was not, surprisingly for me, yeah, I wasn't coping well with with whatever was going on in my uh, head mentally to do with the race. I don't know why, you know, I didn't feel any, it was only self-imposed pressure. I think I was probably really disappointed that, shit, I put all this into this. And then this is the cards I've been dealt on the day. And I was just, if this if this was going to be the whole event, it would have just been horrendous. But it was just the food, you know, sometimes food is a real game changer for, for races and every, every bite, every bite was horrendous. High points, this, it's always, you know, normally for me, Ambleside's a tricky place because I'm going to see the family there. Um, and again, I, I filled myself up with fear on this race because that's when it's that's when it's got me in the past, um, and it's been a pretty pretty rough time after that. But seeing seeing Lisa and the kids there, and like I was I was doing it, I was I was I was I was working hard, I was enjoying it, I was moving, it, and it was all work. Everything was working. It was. It was just like this accumulation. Lisa's like, why are you crying? I'm like, it's it's happy. Oh, <laughs> what time of day did you go through Ambleside? It must have been... Oh, uh, two, two o'clock-ish? Yeah. So it must have been quite busy, most people. Oh, my God, yeah. It's a rush. You're coming to Ambleside. You feel like a pop star yeah. coming in Ambleside. <laughs> you feel like... And we saw there were some listeners... Um, in the woods just before you enter Ambleside. So I got another boost there and everybody's cheering you. You're fortunate if you're in this roughly 24 hour period, um, no matter where you are on the course, you're in daylight. Yeah. Runners as well. Did Lisa say, why are you wearing those goddamn red shorts again? (laughs) <laughs> she just <laughs> she she's okay. But yeah, that was definitely I don't know, it was just like a realization that Mark Lothway, the registration, he said, you know, you never know what's around the corner. So t- like, take your moment basically. If you're thinking about DNF and you don't know what's where you're gonna be this time next year. So do really, really think long and hard about it. Um you don't know the circumstances of next year, and I just you know, Neil, I, I had a lovely chat with Neil afterwards. We, we coincidentally bumped into him and walked to uh, Grassmate together on ooh, yesterday. And uh, yeah, he told me he's entering, oh, he's going to put his name in the ballot for 2024. So the V50, if I'm ever going to do, recreate it again, I've got a, a race on my hands um, definitely next year. But it's all about the moment and everything I did, all the planning, everything, the time and everything. It was just for that day. It was, and 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 it was, just like this epiphany. It was like a realization when I saw Lisa and the kids and I wasn't an absolute mess <laughs> and I was happy. I was like, just so, even though I think then I probably knew 24 hours th- that target had gone. I was doing the maths in my head and, you know, it was only seconds uh, per mile. I probably should have run faster, like probably about three or four seconds a mile faster. I should have run. It didn't get me down. It never, that that went and I'd let it go. And I never, I never hung on to it ever after that once I knew. How was the section then Ambleside onto Coniston? How was that? How much running happened in that section? Well, again, like a, like a, like a warrior. I ran out, <laughs> I ran a, I ran a one spell uh, and that's quite a steep. I didn't run the whole thing. There's a little bit of a dog leg where it gets super steep, but other than that, I, yeah, I, I, I moved well up all of that. Cords were starting to catch up with me then on the descent. Um, but after then, anyone who's in the Lake Nord, you see these big climbs, you see, you know, Coniston, you see Fusedale and uh, coming out of Mardale too. But after Mardale, it's just lots of relatively small climbs. Right, yes. It's like right. bang, 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 bang. You, you keep getting hit by these okay. climbs. But then, yeah, ran into uh, Chapel Style and we saw, I saw a listener there and that was the first time I think I knew that she, she yeah, she, I'm pretty sure she told me you're smashing the V50, Gary. I didn't, I just didn't know until then, if I'm honest, who, where I was in the field. So that was, yeah, again, more, more tears then. Try on her. Did you say anything? No, no. I didn't stop. I didn't stop. Uh, yeah, more tears though. But then again, it was just like a realization. All these little, I was just blessed, Eddie, honestly. I was having such a good day and all these different uh, people popping up. Um, and, and seeing me along the way. I often like when I've had races that have gone well, or just at really hard races, and you're 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 coming through like say post like eighty ish miles of a hundred, where you know unless something terrible happens, it's 
you're going to finish the spine, you coming through that last checkpoint, you, you, unless something bad happens, you go, you know, anything where you turn the slight corner and the finish is there, but you've still got to hold it together. There's yeah. still work to be done. Were you like, I need to hold this together because you're quite an emotional person or were you just letting, letting this, this flow? No, no, I did have a word myself. I remember, I think I actually just, like you said, it, I'm busy. you're you crying energy, Gary. This is just energy. Yeah, it's you, all... can't, you can't, you've got to hold it together because if you let it all come out, you need that bit of like warrior to still inflict pain on yourself. People must have thought I was crazy because I wasn't no, like... Ugly... Know the truth. <laughs> I wasn't ugly crying on the trails, but that, yeah. that, that series, that from, from <laughs> Mandel's side, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's quite busy. It's quite busy down there. Lots of dog walkers. Uh, it's easy, nice, easy trails in the lakes. But yeah, they must have thought, what the hell is this race doing to people? Um, yeah, lots of tears down there. Because uh, again, I knew, I, knew, I knew the time had gone, but I'm like a broken record. I just knew I, I was doing it. I've never I'd never been in that place at, the, at that point in a, in a race. Yeah, it was glorious. Just Still just moving. Different. Still moving without like having to bribe yourself along. What do you think you did differently this time, training wise, to give you that strength in the back half of the or back quarter of the race? Definitely hit the gym more, hit the heavy weights more. The gym, do you think the gym more? Because lots of people will be listening, going, "Gym, it's an extra thing. I don't have time. I don't have the investment." Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Um, do you think the gym actually made a difference? I have to say, you know, you you reflect back on what you did previously, and that is definitely a big change. I've supplemented more and that's a just a, a lovely side effect from the podcast you know i've never i've never done that and we'll be we should be lucky to be supported by some brands um that help us out so yeah my new my training nutrition nutrition and recovery nutrition are just like je- jelly babies and a, and a and an egg sandwich or something that's normally what i do in the past so i've been more mindful of that but yeah just showing up, with the, like you say, lift, lifting heavy, but then be mindful that you don't want to lift too heavy and take that into workout because we are trying to run to um, probably not as many miles as normal. Just showing up. I don't think I did anything drastic, really. I think maybe I was a bit unlucky with, a, a, I don't know, was it an overuse injury or something with my groin? I'm not too sure what that was. It's tricky to say, but I definitely think, yeah, if I was going to, 100% next year. So going forward for 2024, I will be still carrying on with the gym. That is not going to change. I'll still be carrying on with the the, the, the collagen, the Protein Rebel collagen. I've got to own that. You know, my knees aren't aching. I will be on the treadmill more. That is 100% going to feature in the training too. And one thing probably what I will do more of is uh, more time on that route at race or probably above race effort. I didn't do that until probably the last few weeks, if, if I'm honest. Because you really love the, your long days out with mates as yeah. your long run. But that is then, you, you still think you can go sub 24? Oh, 100%. So yeah. One, okay. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I, I said before, I'm saying 24 hours, but I'm just getting slower and slower and slower. You know, it's 25 hours, 26 hours. Why, why? Do I think I can do 25? But when it is literally 24 hours and nine minutes, I think the time was, that is probably three seconds a mile or something over the accumulation of 105 miles. So, yeah, it's on. It, it, it goes back to say what Mark said, though. You you have to take your moment. You, that For the V50, with Neil not being t- t- torn the line, that was 100% my moment then. Next year, it will all be about sub-24 for, for, for me. But I know... And you'll know, and most of our listeners will know, it's not a given. You know, you could rock up there, I could be injured. Um, I just training hasn't gone well. Life's got in the way. The weather conditions are horrendous. It, it, hundred, the longer the race goes, you know, the more high risk it is to pin anything really too great to a, to, to a goal. You know, it's funny, that, that, that whole not hitting 24 hours, it's, it's not a living rent free in my head. It's a quite, I mean, the only time I talk about it is like obviously now, and um, I've had a few uh, DMs, which has been lovely, people reaching out to making sure I'm okay. But that, that's the only time it occupies, is occupying. Right? I'm really just enjoying this. You know, you don't, okay, I'll get it out, heavy flex. You don't. <laughs> you don't just get handed that down Tesco's, do you? Lake 100 first MV50. Let's yeah. talk about that celebration you did as you walked down the, um, <laughs> as you walked down the uh, crowd. I thought I moved quite well. 
<laughs> but you did because you'd message me going, you know, I can hardly move. I've got doms. And then you sort of strolled down that. And I was like, you're such a sandbagger. Every <laughs> second of every day. You are. Very was, um, he was asking me what, what my moves are going to be. And I was like, oh. You could have done a little move. You could have done a little, like, seven. Little yeehaw. Little cowboy yeah. could have rolled the horse. I'd have done a whole line dance down there, like Coyote Ugly on the bars. I'd have, like, slid down on my knees with a water jug. <laughs> that's what I've got the podcast <laughs> <laughs> but that step as you get one of the stage, well, that's quite high. <laughs> you, you, you start that out. I saw you go. <laughs> Isn't it amazing though? Like you can do all of that a hundred miles and then a day later you can barely stand up a step. Or the minute you finish and you go into that marquee and the and you like get a drink, you sit down, and then the yeah. world comes crashing in on you. Uh how do you feel? So it was always about the double, this, the Lakeland 100 and then the Dragon's Back. Though you always said, like, Lakeland 100 is your A race and then Dragon's Back is an adventure. It, does it feel like, okay, I've got I've got time now, I can recover? Well, maybe this isn't the time to answer it either now, but it's almost a nice place because you've done, you've had such an amazing race. You did everything you set out to do, had a great day out there. You didn't have to go into the pain cave as deeply as in other races. You probably different reflection on how you feel about going into Dragon's Back ha- now with such a positive experience rather than like if it had been, you know, hours longer. And, oh, goodness me. Yeah, yeah, imagine that. Do you feel more positive? Do you think you can be more competitive at the Dragon's Back? Do you want to be more competitive? <sighs> One answers, Gary. <laughs> I'm not sandbagging when I... You what are, I look, when you say, you're not going to be competitive against you. All these people. I'm going to... Okay, 100%. You people like me? I heard myself saying, David Parrish, we're going to run some miles at Northern Traverse. <laughs> like, he's so kind. Yes, Eddie, thinking... Yes. Uh... <laughs> I am going to... It's in my niche. You're right. I'm going to push Dragon's Back Race. But not to... Especially day one... You know, I do not want to wake up on Tuesday, on the, on the second day, sorry, with doms and thinking, what the hell have I done? So I need to straddle a fine line between pushing myself. I really want to enjoy camp life. I don't want to be rocking up. Let's my... I need to set the realistic, uh, the camp life is very, very, is like h- half 20 minutes a day. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> just not going to see people because everyone's still racing or they're in their tents or... But you've got a super cool tent. And so... Oh, so lucky. You're going to have well. a great time in that tent. Yeah. There'll be so much laughing. I just want to enjoy it. You're right. You know, the reality is you're not going to have much time. Advance, you know. But just, just to be able to do your admin, you know, literally, um, I think we, we talked to Bev and her experience because some days she was literally getting in there and I think they packed up a little doggy bag for her to, to have the food. I'd love to be getting in there, going in the river, getting clean, having me chips, doing all my admin for the next day. That's what I want to experience. I don't want to be like compounding stress and fatigue and stress and fatigue and not recovering. And then that just makes the whole week a complete misery. But yes, I will push myself as hard as I That's can. what we wanted. That's what we wanted to hit. Where that is in the field, I haven't got. It doesn't, clue, does it no. matter? I don't think it matters in that sort of race. No, no. no. You want to yeah. f- run well, run wise, run strong. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel I'm buzzing. You know, you, they got, you quite often say you really only learn when it hasn't gone well. So the learnings from like 100 maybe aren't there yet. Just silly admin things. Like I said, I didn't take salt tablets and I didn't anticipate puking up. But I don't think the nutrition is going to be such an issue this time because I'm not going to be out for 24 hours. Um, lots of shorter days. But yeah, definitely, definitely uh, pimp up my food but then there's a price to pay it's heavier isn't it if you have tastier food it's it's heavier per carb than what you would say that the the the, the, the mint cake is my staple favorite food but yeah it doesn't serve me well it doesn't serve my tummy well i looked down at my belly and it was like oh my goodness i was just so bloated oh really? it's awful <laughs> isn't it oh it's <laughs> i need you said um you said earlier on that you li- you thought of a lot of things that we'd like talked about or people had give us as little nuggets of gold on the podcast bit of the on the spot question what um anything that really came to mind that you sort of repeated as a bit of a mantra or well, you know, I suppose the first thing that just popped in my head there was was Trish when she said about visualizing your local trails. And that was where I knew to apply effort and I knew how long I had to go and just little sections like that. You know, say if, if it was a checkpoint to checkpoint was seven mile, 
I knew that would be my little morning room with Rex. Mm. <laughs> that's all. That's all it was. And Great. then I knew, done, yeah. yeah. And 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 going out of um, uh, Ambleside, you know, there wouldn't be many people climbing up that hill. But I knew in my head, that's like Heart Attack Hill in the Dean. It's a bit longer, <laughs> but it's but but it's fine. And I, yeah, just yeah, Trish is probably the, the 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 thing I remember the most. But even like I suppose also Emma Stewart, you know, she sat on the side puking her ring up and then got up and won the race. Um, so I knew even though that no food was fun <laughs> after after Dockery, <laughs> that um, I just knew it didn't have to be race ending as long as you could consume something. You know. I, I had a lot of, of investment in my protein shake at Dale Main, and I was just thinking, God, do not puke this up. Do not puke this up. And yeah, milk, milk was fine, apparently. It was, uh, went down a tree, didn't trigger it. You would have thought, yeah, wow, some chemical milk that had been sitting in a bag for, for probably 20 hours. <laughs> but yeah, that went, that went down. And what was lovely, actually, talking about Emma Stewart, I saw her partner, James, in Pooley Bridge, he was in a car park cheering us all on at probably eight o'clock in the morning or something like that. So that was a nice little treat. Just little heroes, little angels popping up all over the place. I absolutely, yeah, loved it. And I loved, to go back actually, diff- different point of the race, charging up Fusedale when my memory from last year, I'm going to try and hold it together. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> my memory from last year, we just seen Dougie Zinnis drift off um, into the distance and... Um, just being able to work and push and enjoy it. Uh, yeah, you kind of bottle that, that feeling. And there was a bunch of people around us, so we were all working together. We got to the top of there. And then you see Horsewater as you summit, uh, as you get over the summit and it opens up. I just thought, yeah, this is it. I'm doing it. I've got past I've got past Fusedale and then Mardale. And I remember sitting me and put guy Paul Paul Swindles, we shared some miles together. And that was awesome. We've we've hatched a little plan maybe for a a, a crack at a sub 24 next year work together we came into Mardale together and um i could just see some people climbing out of Mardale, and i'm just like i'm gonna get these i'm gonna get i'm gonna, I'm gonna catch these <laughs> some of them weren't even going damn racing <laughs> they were just out for a run <laughs> oh i did I love that <laughs> yeah yeah and i just knew it it's such a wonderful feeling like you would just could push and work 60 70 80 90 miles into it and again i've looked at all my splits like a proper nerd that okay. second that second half of the race compared to 2022 and quite a few competitors that finished ahead of me, I was moving so well over that second mm. part of the course. Mm. So I was super, super, just super chill for myself. All, all the graft, all the yeah. graft. <laughs> we loved, we loved, everybody loved Dot watching you. Oh my gosh, the emotional investment in that. Bloody dot. Uh, and the love, the love that came out. I mean, the highlight for me was the guy who'd finished the 50. He literally just sat down with his buckle and on his lap on the phone is a picture of you and he's trekking you. And so the love for you, I mean, it was, it was, I can't, I've still not got through all like the Facebook posts and comments. Yeah. And everything. So I hope like, you take that to heart and like, uh, you know, you're the you're a you're a uh, you're a radiator in life, Gary. And it's uh, it was a gift. It was a true gift. You know, some people you give a lot. You know, you are you give people this platform to tell their stories. You you listen to people. You always want to help people, and and you work your socks off. But you don't expect. You know, you've had really tough races, and you always want people. You know, I'm a running coach. Invest heavily in people's. You know, <laughs> want people to have that. But in this life, in these ultra journeys, is it, you know, we know you roll the dice and you're not, you all know so well, you're not always going to get what you worked for. It's a very good life lesson. And do you know what I truly thought? I had massive FOMO watching your dot, but I was like, I want, I would prefer you to have achieved in that than anything I ever did. I so wanted you because having been with you like week, my God, how are you talking about it? <laughs> week in, week out, probably the same as you felt of me when I was doing the spine. You know, there's, there's personal, like you're watching almost your own dot, like going, willing, knowing exactly oh, there he is. Yeah. He's, 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 you almost want to telly charge yourself there to go keep going i don't know what you're feeling <laughs> so it couldn't you know just not saying it very well but so proud of you and you oh, no, i felt it i felt it from all angles it was you amazing you deserved, because everybody deserved you know when you got to that start line everyone deserves a good race but yeah 
to have that and to have that, you never forget that feeling and that feeling of the family at Ambleside and the feeling of feeling strong. I felt all of the love from everybody and you know yourself as well. It's been, yeah, we laugh and we joke, Eddie, but uh, yeah, I appreciate all the support that we get um, and especially especially from you. It's wonderful. Yeah, I think some people, it, like all of that attention might overwhelm them. But I, I fed off. I really, really did feed off it. It's hard to explain. It was, it was a gift. I just thought it was a privilege. I never had a chance to really feel sorry for myself. To feel positivity all the way. And this race, I think every time I've done a hundred miler, um, they've all been wonderful. But I, I think I've. I've left. I've lost a bit of myself. It's took. It's took a bit more than what I sure. what I give. Yeah. But I definitely feel like I'll come away from this one. Um, I'm in credit <laughs> from this one. Yeah, it was just it was just wild. It was a blast. I don't know what they do if there's like some meeting at Lakeland Hundred HQ. But if it's just a fluke, if they're bottling it, if they're deliberately doing it, but whatever they do, yeah, it's just, they, they just nail it every every year. It's, it's fantastic. And I just can't wait. Goodness me, you know, I'm assuming, I'm saying I'm going to do 2024. My name goes in the hat. And the more we chat about it on the podcast, then maybe it gets a bit, I want a slice of that. So yeah, I need to, we need to rein it in. You sure, it's <laughs> terrible. Ooh, it looked horrible. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it. Oh, no, there's loads of other races. Right, we can't let you go without your quick five, Gary. Okay. I need to think of a song. Should I think of a song? I've not even thought yeah. of a song. Oh, my God. Right. Did you see what song I put to your... You probably didn't. Probably... No, I didn't know. Story when you were out there. You'll never know. You'll never know what I thought. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to have a little... Uh, thing. Uh, what I'll do, my last song I listen to. Let me go. Oh, go. please let it be... Anyway, we're not getting there yet. You gotta do these other ones first. Okay, go for it. Number one. What world record do you think you would have a shot of beating? An eating competition. Some sort of eating, like speed. like how many speed oh, speed. Speed. like how many crackers you can eat in a minute? I've always thought I'd have quite a good Ooh, that's not like good a... moisture. I'd have to have tea. <laughs> Maybe like you a see tea these tea. ones in the they do them in the States, don't they? They do these um spit hot dogs and stuff like that. He said, love it. What object do you lose the most? Any cables for charging stuff. You really literally. anything technology because you're not yeah. good at that. You're always losing microphone, Bluetooth, <laughs> connecting. <laughs> yeah, cables. I'm always losing cables. So annoying. Uh, right. You are given a superpower as your winning uh, trophy from Lakeland. Mark says you've got a choice between invisibility or super strength. That would be super strength, 100%. Oh, of course. Yeah. This really is a bit creepy, isn't it? <laughs> you're quite creepy. Though, you? <laughs> yeah, I'd, love a, I'd love to be super strong. That'd be awesome. Really? Would you, what would you do with it, though? Because like, you could turn over a few cars, knock yeah, over yeah. a house. Pick up some cars. That'd be great. But that wouldn't be good. Visibility you could like go and see all, like people sleep. <laughs> 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 that is really creepy, Eddie. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. <laughs> I saw you sleeping. <laughs> uh, is there anything, I don't think there is, that really annoys you? Litter. Do you know, if that be me, I'd have been, it would have been something that someone did, that that would be really annoying. <laughs> like people adding me to WhatsApp groups without my permission. <laughs> grinds my... It really annoys me if I'm outside a shop and I don't know, see somebody... Doing a scratch card or something stupid like that, and they just. Would you contest them? Would you say? Maybe? No, see, I'm not. I'm not the activist. I'm not confrontational. I'll, I'll just mourn to Lisa for about four years. I was <laughs> about. <laughs> I just don't understand. I don't understand. If I see true, you know, in the you don't really see much litter actually in the lakes. I think people are very mindful, but in the nature reserve, Castle Eden Dean, I'll see Costa cups propped on trees. I'm just thinking, what the goddamn idiot would do? Come down here, somewhere beautiful. And do that. Right, Instagram story music. Can I, can I have a little? I just want to see what I played last. last. It can't be anthrax. I've got anthrax as my last. <laughs> oh, it's so tough, so tough, my God. I think it needs to be something that sums up the race as well, like with some, with some lyrical meaning behind... I don't know. Just what popped in my head then was Oasis Live Forever. 
I actually enjoy I'm going to enjoy that one more than anything else you've ever suggested. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I that love that. Right. Oh, I look forward to seeing. If you could supply us with the uh, three or four pictures, that would be great. And let us know if you acknowledge the pictures. <laughs> Gaza loved every minute of that loved hearing his story what a privilege to be able to hear all about it and well done to everybody who towed finished didn't finish had an adventure um hopefully you could have uh related a little bit to some of Gary's adventure and also learn never ever give up in Mark Lithwaite's words never give up you never know what's around the corner I want to say thanks you know to all of the the people in the checkpoints I had I had some love, I had some care, I had some tough love, I had some motivation. Everything um, came to me. And also sure. at the end... I saw the shorts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at the very end, when I was in a pretty sorry state, um, medics are just angels, honestly. They just have such a lovely weight about them. And uh, one in particular, you know, she... I don't think I was in danger of being rushed off to hospital, but I didn't want to eat, I just didn't want to do anything. And she... She finally forced a little gummy bear in my, in my, in my mind. She was really very softly but persistent and, uh, yeah, just kept an eye on me, gave me a nice space blanket to warm up. I think I even managed a cup of tea. And I think because milk, the milkshakes didn't make me puke, I had, a, I had a glass of milk. But, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much to everybody from the, you know, registration. I was such a treat. When I finished the race, I didn't say this. Um, I know a guy from the northeast called Barry Dunn, and he's done a Lakeland 50. He may have even towed the lines a few times for the 100. And to finish all that race and to see a mate, he was the marshal at the finish. To see Barry there was just like, wow. It, could, it's, it was just perfect. It was just perfect. And they, they wheel you in, announce you to the crowd, and um, I think that's when he confirmed I was v50 champ um but yeah just thanks to everybody everybody who's been there shaking hands selfies i've stroked dogs i've done <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's, it's been wonderful. <laughs> we pitched the tent we pitched the tent next to angela uh green's tent just cut to all coincidence you know she's a massive fan of the podcast i've just again like last year it just fills my cup to be they're your people you know being around your people is is a pretty pretty wonderful we're their experience. people that's the thing isn't it we're yeah. there we're we're reliably average <laughs> and setting the bar low every week i didn't cry did he i got through i thought i was going over a little bit oh, held it together I, I, was, I was looking at you with my firm eyes <laughs> <laughs> held it together held it together you told a beautiful story oh, thanks eddie thanks. Top the Strava leaderboard. God damn it, Craig Evans. <laughs> God damn you, Craig Evans. I did check out Craig Evans's uh, Strava and he's a request to follow, but he had a Lakeland 50 medal as his avatar. Pretty sure he might have been torn the line on the Lakeland 100. And yeah, 142 miles. So that's quite a big week. Like, unless he did a massive uh, nav error, but in 40, 40 miles roughly before the Lakeland 100. But yeah, awesome, awesome, Craig. Awesome effort there. And Keith. Wiggly, lots of UTMB named recce runs on his Strava 32,000 feet. Oh, that elevation. sounds like a dreamy week. 32,000 feet. I can yeah. imagine the refuges he's been to, the trails he's run on, the Coke, the Tatma Till. <laughs> I really love that. I'd love that as an adventure. You know, whether I ever towed the line on that race or not, just to go and have some fun. Oh, I would say to anybody, go, you don't run the race, go with mates do it over four days yeah. it's super challenging go in september quiet refuges trail all to yourself take your time and still an amazing still really hard and angela green great to see angela green top the charts for time on beat purely coincidence but we parked next to each other in the field at the campsite in Connison. So that was great to see angela and she's a Lakeland 100 finisher too she's got an awesome story and uh, yeah if you're listening angela please Put pen to paper because your race journey is definitely I worth it. She posted something like not far into the race that she'd fallen or something, but she was going to carry on. And I thought, oh gosh. So often happens. This isn't the journey you trained for, but she dealt with what she'd been handed on the day. And I love 42 hours out there, though. Not not the actual Lakeland 100 um, time, but 42 hours for the whole week. 42 hours and 30 minutes and 57 seconds. I want to short change you answer. Well done. Awesome. We've got some results, Eddie. First time we've done this, and our organiser, Tia, 
members get the privilege of us uh, sharing their results. And it was the Yorkshire Walls Way race at the weekend. And uh, Anna Klipnika took first lady and she was the overall win too. So that's awesome. Four hours, 23 minutes and 57 seconds. And David Morrison was first male. Four hours, 32 and 21 seconds. I will be really interested how that race panned out if they were together for most of it. If they yo-yoed, what was going on there? But yeah, it was Anna's first ever ultra. So that that's pretty wild. <laughs> I love that. Just like rocking up. <laughs> and then we're, we're an ultra. And David, yeah, he was winning the World Rangers Ultra back in April, but got an injury. Uh, so yeah, it was nice that he returned and set the record straight. So yeah, some great stories there. Well done, everyone. Well done. And since we interviewed Grant, we've had so much amazing feedback on the Facebook page about how great his races are or people signing up to them. So I love I love a round circle of giving. I got a Tales from the Trails. Uh, I haven't read this either. I just saw a lot of text and it's about Chamonix and I thought I'm going to read it. It's, I like to be, you know, not know the story. Hi, Team Trails family. My trail adventures started by a missed time trip to Chamonix in 2016. My wife's birthday was fast approaching and thought a nice quiet week away in the Alps would be a great place to visit. Little did I know that it would be busier than Oxford Street at Christmas. As we drove into Chamonix, we saw lots of UTMB banners and thousands of people. My wife then said, I thought this place was quiet. I'd never even heard of UTMB or what it was. After checking into our hotel, we went for a walk around and noticed lots of runners and soon realised that UTMB was a running event. Having run a couple of marathons and Great South Runs, I thought I'd go and enter. I went up to someone <laughs> who looked official and asked how much it was to enter and where do I pay? Needless to say, the official laughed and kind explained that you had to gain points to enter the ballot for the races. That was the beginning of my trail adventures. I then entered the Salisbury 50K. I remember that race. I've done it. To get my qualification to enter the Centurion 50 milers. In 2017, I completed the Centurion 50 mile Grand Slam, four by 50 milers in the same year, and the Centurion Southlands Way 100, and promptly put my name in the ballot for CCC 2018, which I was lucky enough to get drawn out. Training for CCC went well, and I felt fit and ready on race day. I was drawn in the second wave and was told about the bottlenecks when you approached the market researchers shouting out what shoes you were wearing, so I was keen to get a good start. The elites and fast runners went off and I made my way up to the front of my wave to get a good position to motor up the first climb to avoid the bottlenecks. As the announcer called out two minutes to go and the music started, I was tapped on the shoulder by an official with clipboard in hand saying he needed to check my kit. I told him we start in less than two minutes, but he insisted he needed to check my kit. Obviously, the first thing he asked for was to see my full blanket, which was right at the bottom of my pack. As I got all my gear out and put it on the floor, the announcer shouted, go, go, go. Hundreds of others <laughs> and clouds through me, keeping my gear everywhere, resulting oh. in me using two head torches, gloves, and most of my nutrition. If you don't know, I'm getting off the team trail story, but the Koma Your Star is quite a bottleneck, and it's a, it's quite a big town, but then it goes up a really steep road and then onto a, like a narrow trail for a long time. It must be like a stampede of bulls to get up through there. Oh, gives me anxiety thinking about it. Okay, after gathering up what I could find and receiving a green dot on my race bib to say I'd had my kit jet, I set off thinking, how am I going to get through the night with no head torch? Still confident of getting a finish that I'd never had a DNF or even thought of not finishing a race before, I was running well and was loving the course with all the fantastic views. As I got to the top of Grand Col Ferret, it was freezing cold and that's when losing my gear started to enter my head. The descent into La Folie was fun as it was wet and muddy and people were falling over everywhere. At La Folie aid station, I asked anyone if anyone had a spare head torch I could borrow as I'd lost mine. But it's funny how everyone forgot how to speak English when you need something. Thinking I'd just run behind someone... Uh, when it got dark probably wasn't the best idea as I soon found out how dangerous that was when I couldn't see much apart from a massive drop uh, to my right made me think twice about my plan of sharing someone's light with no option but to get the sorry bus back to Chamonix at my first DNF oh no fast forward to 2022 and after getting lucky in the ballot you have been lucky I was back for another crack at CCC things didn't go well on my lead up to the race with a hamstring injury limiting my ability to run very much so I thought I could easily hike 100k in 26 hours marching up the first climb I hit the first 45 minute bottleneck which when you're hiking and shuffling on is hard to make that time up and draws you nearer the cut Offs. As I approached the aid station before the climb up to Grand Colferet, I rolled my ankle and hobbled in to be met by a doctor who kindly bandaged my ankle but then said I can't carry on as the next climb is hard and long and if I couldn't carry on when I got to the top, it would be a problem getting me down. 
I said, okay, I'm okay to carry on. But he insisted I didn't. I then went to get some food and drink, which to my surprise, found out there wasn't anything left. Empty Coke bottles were filled with water and a few curled up sandwiches remained. I noticed the doctor had gone to talk to someone, so I made a quick exit and hobbled my way up to the climb to Grand Colfinet, only to see a few mi- minutes later, three people running up behind me, telling me to stop and basically dragging me back down the hill, saying I wasn't allowed to carry on. Gosh, this is so dramatic. Feeling like I was thrown out of the race rather than pulling the plug myself had left me with a rather sour taste in my mouth about the UTMB setup. How can they run out of food and coke at any A station given how big an event is? The lack of encouragement to carry on and being chased up a hill to pull out of the race make me laugh looking back. I still love the whole carnival that is the UTMB week in Chamonix and will be back. Goodness me. That tale from the drop. I think we're stressed out reading <laughs> reading that one. Gotta go back. You need a training plan. Oh, that's so annoying. But maybe I mean, he doesn't say how bad the injury then was. Did it turn out to be the right thing to stop? Let us know. Uh, always positive and negative things you hear about you. Tell me. It kind of depends, I think, how people's race has went as well. Whether they've had <laughs> as with anything, isn't it? Uh, it's a good point. point. You know, like you say, you make a good point. Be interested to know how serious his injury was. But uh, yeah, if he was going to go higher and then he couldn't move. It could have it probably was the right call to be honest tricky one love your tails and trails keep them coming in hopefully there'll be lots of lakeland 50 and 100 tail from the trails in the next few weeks as well our nutrition giveaway is up oh my goodness it took me ages so i just spin the wheel and then i spun the wheel again to decide who won what prize so i've got all the video evidence if anybody uh wants to confirm it here we go just to annoy me just to annoy him <laughs> <laughs> so basically what you had to do and i think we'll do this again because it, you know i do like to say thanks to our patrons because they are the ones that make this all possible mike hall he took the win for the protein rebel bundle Haley todd won the villa forte stash michelle johnston won the active root bundle ed shepard little nice uh, stash from <laughs> Shepard. <laughs> Shepard. Uh, yeah, he won the uh, bits and bobs from X Miles. And Mandy Swinnard got a nice little package from, oh, I think it's a voucher actually from Mountain Fuel. Oh, it's a little package. Well done, Mandy. That'll come yeah. your way. <laughs> Everybody get in touch and then I'll connect you with all the various brands and we'll get your bits and bobs off to you as soon as possible. But also, yeah, don't forget we've got our Innovate competition. If you pop over to our website and uh, click on the competition tab, and that'll take you to the Innovate landing page. And I think you've just got to sign up for the newsletter. And that's going to be running until the 1st of September, I think. So, yeah, check that out too. We'll have a new competition. We'll have a new competition coming up soon. Just got a few in the pipeline. Just those trainers, to... Andy Berry's winning trainer of choice. You now know that you're I'm busy. pretty sure. Yeah, I was looking at his footwear. Uh, I'm pretty sure it. Yes, the trainers that Andy wore, definitely since Dale Main, I'm not too sure if he started with a different pair of shoes, but definitely since Dale Main with the shoes that are for grabs in this competition. Normally I need a pick-me-up, Eddie, but uh, this week I'm feeling pretty... <laughs> I, <laughs> I, need okay. I need a pick-me-up. <laughs> okay, 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 I'll, I'll give you a Do boost. It. Who's going to be? Okay, Graham Pepper. Well, I've seen Graham Pepper a few times um, over the weekend. Very lovely that he was at a Black Seal Pass, which thinking, how the hell did him and his team get up there? And also, I'm pretty sure it was Graham took a video of me as I was coming into the finish. I thought I was running like a gazelle. But no. <laughs> <laughs> like an 80 year old man that wet himself. But a few people were quite kind and commented, like, how are you still moving so well? And I was like, you're very kind. He looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks, Graham. Great podcast for all things trail running, striking a great balance between humor, facts, real life problems, and trail issues. Also, a cracking guest interview every week. I met Gary and Eddie. On the spine race in January, Gary was happy, chirpy, enthusiastic at Middleton. Eddie was quiet, subdued, and a bit grumpy. A, a, oh, was that Brianess? Yeah, Brianess. But you had just smashed. <laughs> but you had just smashed 240 odd miles on slippery, slidey, muddy, snowy, icy course. That is the legendary winter spine. And Gary hadn't. He kept talking to me and I kept falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I just go to stay awake. And it's like, hey, do you love the podcast? And I was like, uh, yeah. Uh, I read this one because I like the title. Chloe Me. More tea, please. Always. Oh, I tell you what. 
I did do, I did have an most amazing cup of tea yesterday. Can I tell you the story before the review? Yeah, uh, go for it. Bryn and I did the hill reps in the morning. Obviously, I did them first. And then I message him as I'm cooling down, coming down the hill, so that then he can start coming up. So, because we've got kids. And then we decided to go up Shahalian, which is our nearest Munro with the kids, which is not a, a big walk for the. Alpine Sutton family. So, and it was a bit rainy and claggy. And so I packed just, I packed Bryn and I a massive tea flask and the kids, big precision hydration one, which must be like a litre and a half, thought that would be enough. And it ended up, I mean, they drunk all the water about a quarter of the way up the Monroe. <gasps> I didn't take enough water. My God, we were so dehydrated. I mean, the kids, they're fine. The kids, they can be dehydrated. Bryn and I, poor Bryn and I, after the hill reps and then rushing to get out the door, making picnics. I was so dehydrated. It was awful. I knew there was some loos in the car park at the bottom. It's like, kids, we'll fill the water bottle up. It got to the point where we were all just like, all we're thinking about was water. And um, I was like, there's loos, so we'll fill the tap up. But they were like, um, they were like porter loos inside. Like, there was no, I was like, oh, there's no. Don't want to drink that water already. <laughs> Don't drink that water. Let's get to let's get to the uh let's get to the nearest cafe. Got in the car, it's about 25 minutes to the cafe. Poor kids. <laughs> do, do you want some crisps? And even they were like, no crisps, mom. I got no moisture. You try. <laughs> we go to the cafe and I joke you not. So we had like tea for two each, pots of tea. The kids had like a a ginger beer each and we had four carafts of like two litres of water. The, the person that came to the order, I was like, just liquid. We're just going to start with the liquid order and they came with like two trays of liquid and then we were like, okay, we're ready for cake now. We're ready for cake. Anyway, uh, so anyway, the tea was incredible. It was a uh, leaf tea and it was in a big china pot. Oh my God. I know when you were really dehydrated, the tea tastes good, but this was like nectar. Tea is a drink for every occasion, honestly. Oh my God. And I didn't, I think I had one glass of water, but basically I drank a pot of tea for two twice over. I must have had about 18 cups of tea. And I sucked. <laughs> Oh, dear. Anyway, so Chloe, review. More tea, please. Whilst I'm nowhere near the mileage discussed, I'm sure you are near my mileage, Chloe, discussed on a weekly basis as a relatively new trail runner, the tips, tricks, guidance and support definitely played a part in me successfully competing my first trail half marathon in June this year. So thank you. I am now an avid weekly listener and find both Gary and Eddie alongside the coach and the guests so inspiring. Oh, she said it's inspiring. Normally people say something rude there, um, that I definitely got some runs planned in the next few years, which I honestly don't think I I would have had the confidence to consider alone. Oh, well done. And also can't forget this duo is comedy gold. Yeah. I don't think we are comedy gold. I don't think we're trying to be funny. I think people are laughing <laughs> at us rather than... Us. <laughs> but you're right, people normally give us a comp- it's like a give and take, isn't it? It's like, oh, these lovely nutters or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> Eddie's grumpy. I'm not going to forget that. Girl. My favourite podcast, hands down, keep up the good work. Guys, Gary didn't need to feel the love that much this week, but thank you. Thank you. Keep the reviews coming in. We love them. So what does post-race recovery week look like for you, Gary? Just a few light 10Ks? Yeah, I'm going to have my 45-minute uh, hill session on the trail. <laughs> no runs, no 100%, no runs, not even any love runs. Um, I think I probably could run today, if I'm being honest, but no. We went to Hawkshead today. I've, never, I've driven through Hawkshead a few times. It was like I was on a film set, Eddie. It was amazing. Just lots of easy stuff. We did a walk to Grassmere yesterday. Hopefully going to get some ice cream, but the goddamn, because it was raining, shop was shut. That's why we went to Hawkshead, because the shop's open there. <laughs> but we had a right result. We stumbled across, because everything's expensive, you know, and then you go for a, a cup of tea and a cake in the lake. Oh, and... my God, no. I've got the most expensive thing. We did a pedalo, all of us, on one pedalo, five of us, for an hour, on a lock, in a very small Scottish place. How yeah. much do you think that would cost? Oh, I've never done stuff. Uh, I don't know. Take a punt. Thirty-five pounds. Oh my god, it was thirty-five pounds. Oh, <laughs> I didn't realise. And so we went out for like forty minutes, and we basically certain family used it as a training exercise. Obviously, so we went right across the lock. We let the kids go across the lock, and then we were like, "We'll show you coming back how hot the pedals were." Quite 
uh, close to the seat. So Bryn gave up pretty easily because it was like, my hamstrings are now going into cramp. Anyways, we did the whole tour in like 40 minutes. And I was like, should we should we go back, Bryn, and go and get a bit of more cake? And then I didn't realize how much it cost. And he said, £35 for this small plastic debatable whether it would float thing with I mean that to me seems like extortionate surely a lot of dust we were we doing different things so we went to the Mort Museum that was quite nice uh saw the Bluebird exhibition too we just wouldn't normally do stuff like that I went to the aquarium at the bottom of Windermere that is uh yeah well off our radar but yeah us, I walk around at the back going <laughs> Extra steps I don't need. <laughs> there's too there's a lot of reading, isn't there, when you're using it? It's like, oh my god. I like those hand clap things they give you, and then you can just listen. And the kids can't talk to you because you can just keep going, shh, I'm listening. But we stumbled across um which was great value for money, a scouts fundraiser in Hawkshead. Um so loads of you know, home baked cakes, fresh scones out of the oven, lovely cups of tea, and I think it cost us but yeah, that probably cost us about 12 quid for everybody. It was absolutely That's amazing. I'm good. Massive yeah. contrast to we were going to go and sit down for some lunch. And then I looked at the menu and I think a pizza was about 14 pounds. I'm like, well. Yeah, we'll Bryn just picked up for a meal. And I was like, Bryn, that's like 150 quid of oh, five of us. And now the kids, like the kids menu, our kids would be like, are you joking? That's the portion for the hamster. I see. It, we went to the M&S cafe today and it was like kids menu meal for free. And I yeah. was like, so Finney was like, well, I'll have four kids' meals. <laughs> yeah, we can't swing the kids' menu anymore. We did. Uh, oh, I guess I'll get told off. We, the kids were children when we went into the aquarium. <laughs> was oh, did, what's the age? We like Esme go swimming. <laughs> well, George, George is okay, but Esme, yeah, we we uh, pushed it with Esme. She's 17. She'd have been oh, well, we got on Finley on all the public transport in, Lon- in London two years. So I was like, just go, come on. We pay our taxes. <laughs> all right. Don't arrest us if there's any police listening. When, when I used to go to the pub wall as a kid, I'd try and get alcohol underage in the pubs in Sunderland. Oh my God, scary. <laughs> and then I'd sneak into the child's turnstile at the football too. <laughs> 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 Drunk. Yang and yang. <laughs> Young northerner. <laughs> But yeah, 100% no mountains. I promise the kids, no mountains. This oh, it's so important. Anybody that runs a week after a 100 miler needs their head examined. And just enjoying it. You know, it's oh, it's um, it's super important. So well as well. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. You can't it's do it. to do, isn't it? Have your holiday the week after a race because I've seen a few, you know, people that Lakelands didn't go as planned and then yeah. it's a rough the week after that, isn't it? You can be a bit low. And if you're with your family all the time as well, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, you know I, I don't remember last year i don't think i was too grumpy maybe lisa's memory is different of my holiday emotions um but yeah just you know really really enjoying this uh time they don't come along often Eddie. i know i'm whining but i absolutely love it i wouldn't change it for the world i love watching them i love doing stuff with them i love them being around and i love all of us being been not working and being on holiday. So what about you? So we started the week off good. We've got the hill reps in. We we are lucky where we are. It's very hilly, so we can get some good vertins and lovely time. Love running around in Scotland. Or almost nicer than Alpine trails. It's a real mixture of where we are. So we're going to try and get long running. We're just working out how we can do that. I'm planning on doing um another long run. We don't fly back until late on Saturday and I have to get up again. The crack ass Sunday, but it's gotta be done got another session four by ten minutes haven't decided whether to do that on the flat or uphill yet what kind of effort is that you 10 minutes <laughs> just the one effort that i have kind of out of breath <laughs> <laughs> Bryn, Bryn asked me he's like so what what effort do you do your uphill uh effort at? and i was like well my uphill efforts i do at this heart rate and then my flatter efforts i can go at a higher higher heart rate i feel uh blah, blah, blah. and he's like i was like so what about you are you do you want to buy my heart mental genes he's like Oh, love, I've got one pace. Uh, just that one pace. So I will just run that one pace. Because the other day we were running uphill together and I was like, why are you running so fast up this hill? This is meant to be an easy one. We can't talk because you're running so fast. And obviously I'm not going to learn from me. And he's like, that's the one pace I've got. I've got no other emotions going into the On and off. It's such a man and woman's thing, isn't it? It's like, yeah. 
it's fun. It's like it's just one base love. It just feels a bit fast for you today. Anyway, we'll carry on. We'll crack on. Normal service in the Alps will resume next week, and uh, I'll re and re going with sessions. Hopefully, will feel a bit better. I know that I will feel better. When will you start running again? I don't know actually i'm not really like next week spin the legs a little bit. yeah i could go to the bike yeah it's good george was asking me about my that uh clothes horse in the front room yeah. <laughs> so yeah that's a good that's a really good point actually i might even um Thanks. re relaunch my um crank the old zwift up and just yeah spin the legs uh n- nothing at all this week just eating everything you got we can talk about this next week but we'll need to carefully monitor your recovery from now until dragon's back coach eddie needs to carefully supervise what is actually going to happen oh i appreciate that thank you but it, i've got no goals for dragon's back apart from finish it oh uh, but- whatever i will I not i will not hear that on this podcast i've got no goals yeah you're right we are done for another week thanks to your patience normal service will resume next week yeah hopefully you enjoyed the show <laughs> and if you did please take a look at patreon loads of great deals over there you save a few quid we can put some money in the meter too and thanks to all our partners and patrons new and old be kind to your future self. I use that mantra quite a few times over the course of the race. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow and give us a share. Tell your mates, tell your running buddies. In fact, tell everyone. <laughs> I had quite a few non-runners say hello to me at the weekend. And they were like announced... I, your wedding. I had a few non-runners that said, did yeah. you listen to your podcast? I'm like, really? <laughs> Stay safe on the trails, everyone. Run, rise, run well and don't overdo it. Make sure you take a couple of water bottles on any uh, long effort. Listen Listen to your body as well as your favorite podcast and make sure you refuel with your favorite brew. May I recommend buying a pot of tea for two, but just give it to yourself. My name is Eddie Sutton. And I'm Gary Thwits. And that was Gary's episode number 33 of Tea and Trails. <laughs>